um, electronic speed controller. That's that kind of box that all the wires are going into and out of. You want to upgrade the ESC to something that has a little bit more, uh, it can handle more amps than the, the stock system, although I think you can use the stock system with this. Um, it might not be good for the motor because brushless and brush motors use different um, speed controllers. But you just uh, wire this together. You maybe you're going to have to cut out a little bit more foam to you know, fit this guy in there. The wire's a little bit thick, but we just kind of place it in there, make some incisions. You see uh, there's kind of a hole up towards the front. There's another uh, servo cable coming out. The servos are literally just pushed in the side, and I hold them in place with tape on the outside. And those go to our control rods. So now here I've uh, stuck the receiver in. And at this point, the plane is actually a fully functional remote control model airplane. We've got the receiver that's plugging into the ESC and into the two servos on the outside of the plane. So this guy can fly under manual control. Can you tell what brand that brushless motor is? The brushless motor is from, uh, I want to say HiMax. It's a HiMax. I can't remember the exact model number. If you go on the DIY Drones website, um, they have it all. They've got it all there. And uh, this is what the finished uh, system looks like. Unfortunately, my camera kind of broke, so I couldn't take any pictures integrating the autopilot. But we have everything under, the, uh, under that front hood there. And uh, you can see the antenna coming out for the video transmitter. So you literally just plug everything in, just like we had the systems diagram, as I showed you earlier. And uh, it's, it's ready to fly. So ah, the payload, OK. So like I mentioned, that board camera, this is my $18 board camera. A pan tilt system is going to allow you to kind of slew this and you know, target it independently of, its, of the aircraft's uh, movement. So obviously, you, the, the way that you want to fly this, if you want to you know, kind of be a, a badass, is to get this guy up there. You give it its different uh, you know, waypoints. It just goes up there. It's flying its route. And then you can take control of the camera. So the coolest way to take control of the camera I may borrow from my military roots here, is to mount a gyroscope inside your uh, you know, good old bike helmet. <laughs> you put this guy on top, right? And of course, we're safety conscious people, so we're going to snap this in. All right. And uh, this is going to attach this gyroscope. I didn't put it in the slide. If you, uh, if you search head mount gyro, um, you'll get it. I think it's called a R2 head, uh, head tracker. But anyways, this guy's going to attach to your uh, RC transmitter. And then you can don your super awesome video goggles like this. OK. I know, I, I look like somebody out of Star Wars right now, don't I? But um, then all you need to do is just to press a switch on your uh, video transmitter. And then however you move your, your head is going to slew the camera in two axes. Now, I didn't come up with that system. The only kind of contribution I made to the community was the idea of mounting it under the wing instead of um, right here. Usually, they won't put this foam canopy on, and they'll have the camera up top. But I thought, you know, man, that's not cool. I can't look underneath the plane. And what if my target goes behind the plane? Then I got to turn the whole thing around, kind of put the nose down. Eventually, I'm going to hit something. So if you, uh, if you mount the camera underneath using these uh, micro servos, which you can get from uh, any model airplane store, and a $20 pan tilt system. It's literally just a, a couple gears, as you can see there. Then you can slew this camera um, you know, almost 180 degrees behind you and, and to the left and whatnot. So let's see. Oh, movie time. All right. So what you're going to get when you in incorporate that entire video system there? Oh, looking at the grass, upside down, grass. Man, this is bad. Okay. Is, uh, it's going to look something like this. Yep, it works. Okay, we can take off now. I was getting a little nervous every time I put this up there because, you know, this is like a month's pay. <laughs> we're going to take off. There we go. All right, so we're airborne. So when you fly this thing, first thing you want to do is just get up to altitude. I, model airplane guys call this uh, two mistakes altitude. Um, for me, I'm not really too quick on the stick, so I, I guess it's like one, maybe one and a half. But you get it up there, and then you literally just flip a switch. The RD pilot system currently has three modes. Manual, it has autopilot, and it's just going to fly its, its route, and then RTL, which stands for return to launch. 
So here we're kind of slewing the camera a little bit. Um, as you can see, the video resolution is pretty good. You can see people walking on the sidewalk there right below us. Yeah, it was really windy this, uh, that day that we took this video, so that's why we're kind of shaking all over the place going downwind. But as we make a left-hand turn here in about a second, we'll really stabilize out. And at this point, we are completely hands-free. We're just, we're just checking out the video feed, you know, sipping a Long Island and sitting back. So let me see if I can get to the interesting parts. We got bored just kind of flying around after a while, and we decided, let's see if we can follow people. <laughs> so, turns out it was a little too windy to get, like, really low and, you know, kind of freak them out. You can sneak up on people from behind. I'm telling you, this, this thing's great. But we, uh, oh, damn you, Vista. There we go. Maybe we start following the bus. Buses. Where are you? Here we go. Nope. Apologize. My video editing skills were like terrible. I eventually gave up trying to work uh, Vegas Pro. Oh, we got a question. What's the legality? Can you just fly anywhere without any permit or any restrictions on how much you can fly these things? So I think you're not allowed to fly in like restricted zones. <laughs> you know? <laughs> If, if any of you are private pilots, you might be able to answer this question better. But um, I think... Uh, in D.C.? No, no, no. This, we are, uh, we'll talk about le legal issues. We're, yeah, we're, we're dealing with model airplane rules here. But basically, I, as the rule of thumb, I think if you wouldn't fly a Cessna over it, you probably shouldn't be flying this over it, especially when it's transmitting back to you and they can kind of you know, direction find your position, because that wouldn't be good. Uh, stall speed depends on how much payload you stick in the plane, but I think you're looking about 20 miles an hour. When you uh, really crank it, you can do 60, maybe 70 miles an hour on this plane. Yes? Very good question. I should have put this in a slide. So lithium polymer batteries uh, have kind of made news recently because they're being used to power all the electric cars that, you know, Detroit is still trying to figure out. And uh, I, don't, I didn't think it was that hard. But um, what you want to do is uh, you want to go out. There's a website called, uh, I'll say it's uh, Hobby King, hobbyking.com. The Chinese right now are making the best lithium polymer uh, hobby cells. And for 20 or $30, you can get... Um, all the way up to like a 4,000 milliamp hour uh, LiPo battery. That's going to be um, about as long as a, uh, a Hallmark card and, and you know, maybe about a half inch thick. It's going to weigh a bit depending on how much uh, energy density you have. Or I'm sorry, they all have the same energy density, but you know, depending on the rating of the battery. Right here I'm flying with a 1,500 milliamp hour battery. And with that, I can keep the plane up in the air for about 45 minutes. Uh, if I want to put a larger battery up, Obviously, you kind of got to keep your, uh, your throttle up a little higher to keep the plane up. But the best system I have right now, I can keep this plane airborne if I'm just kind of loitering around and not doing anything high speed or crazy for over an hour. So you're looking about an hour, hour 15 minutes. Um, honestly, after about 20 minutes, your neck kind of gets a creak, and you're like, man, it's cold out. I'm going inside. So, so uh, that's kind of the battery situation. Um, it really is up to you, but LiPo batteries are the way to go. Uh, forget, you know, uh, NICADs and nickel metal hydrate batteries. Yes, sir? Michael, if the plane goes down, are the radios on board and up to find Yeah, so, I mean, this thing doesn't stop transmitting when it hits a building. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got, you got video. I mean, you're going to have a lot of interference and everything, as we found out when we hit a tree yesterday. Like, oh, that, that looked pretty gnarly just from the video feed. But, uh, it, well, yeah, so if you're, if you're using the telemetry, um, it's, the RD pilot system is sending its uh, GPS coordinate to uh, the ground station as soon as it gets it and processes that information. It's also, spending, it's also sending other information like airspeed, heading, next waypoint. And uh, you can configure it however you like. The best thing about Artipilot is it's open source, open hardware. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys could do more with it than I can. But, um, yeah, if the plane goes down, you have its last position data. And as long as it hit the ground and isn't currently moving, then you could probably go get it.